Hi, welcome to Range and Country. I'm Lawrence. And I'm Peter. And we're here to bring you honest reviews of air guns and shooting equipment. Okay, so with us today we've got the Daystate Red Wolf GP, their new sort of target orientated rifle well, based on their electronic Red Wolf action, isn't it? It certainly is. Now, you said Daystate. So I've read on day, on, on the on the internet that Daystate have poor customer service. What, it, what, it, what's that all about? Hear that on the forums, don't you? It's a lot of it's what it is. The people that are saying that is a lot of uh, when I I had a I had a problem this problem that that problem uh, I couldn't get hold of the factory when I when I wanted to try and sort it. Um, Talking of getting hold of the factory, how did you get on with that? Uh, Queer with FX in Sweden last week. In Sweden? Well, I, I didn't ring Sweden. Why would I ring Sweden? Well, that's the factory. I, I, don't, I don't speak Swedish. Oh, good point. Yeah. No, the, the, the point that we make there is you don't, your contract of purchase is, is with the place that you buy it from, is from your local dealer. So, yes, you, Day State don't deal with public, but then BSA don't, FX don't, Air Arms don't. A lot of other manufacturers don't deal with the public. So you go to your local dealer, um, and certainly for us, we're a, a service centre for Daystate. Um, we can generally fix any problems in-house. Now, we are a premier dealer, aren't we? And I think it's I think it's important to say that when you're buying a Daystate, I think you need to choose your dealer well, don't you? Yes. You need to be careful when you choose a dealer. You need to, to come to us. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, need, you need to... To buy from a dealer that can give you the support and the backup that you that, that you want, whether it's technical queries, inquiries, whether it's spare parts, whether it's if you get an issue, you want it sorting. So just cho cho choose your dealer carefully. There are a network of Daystate Premier dealers in the country, and these are supported very heavily from the factory. Yes, um, we, we 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 speak to the factory daily. Um, we have a direct well, phone number straight to straight to the office. We do. So instead of going through their landline number, through the press one for sales and all that. Yeah, we've got a direct contact number for them. So we we, we get straight in. If if we get quiz, if we need spare parts, we 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 we're, we're straight through. Um, it really does pay. We we we, we always get queries, don't we? What, what what what's what's this doing, or what what what's that for, or. And we know these guns pretty well, don't we? Inside out, I would say, because we 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 repair them. Should should you get a leak or should you get a, any problems at all, we do the re repair them ourselves. So we know exactly what's going on inside. Um, that's quite important. They're they're quite technical, and you need to know stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, that's enough rabbiting on about day state themselves. Let's get on to the rifle. Yes, let's. So what have we got here? Why is this different to a normal Red Wolf? Um, and what is it? Because it's got the letters GP on the side of it. Oh, is it spelling? Is that what, that's yeah. the difference? Yeah. So what does GP stand for? Grand Prix. Okay. Now, we'll jo joke aside, can't we? But I mean, the Red Wolf is a superb rifle in its own account, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's absolutely stunning. If, if you want a reliable rifle, Personally, I'd always pick up a Red Wolf with the electronic trigger. There's a reason it's the money that it is. It is, yeah, yeah. It it's it's a good old it's a good gun. This one's a bit special, isn't it? Yeah. I think Gavin's been rather busy at PRS, hasn't he? And he's put together this rather nice chassis. Yep. So essentially, the the only thing that's that differentiates this between a normal Red Wolf and the GP is the PRS stock and target paraphernalia that are on it. Yeah. Now these are these are wood grips. But they've got a funny. They're very very rough, aren't they? They are rough, grippy. Grippy, yes. I hundred percent. I mean, it, it does say it's wood. I, I wouldn't have plumbed for wood straight off, but I'd have plumbed for some sort of synthetic material. But it's 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 nice. Yep, it's a yeah, nice grippy, very grippy. And you know, if you're out in the field on an HFT course. And it's raining. 
that's going to be, you're not going to lose your grip. No, that's going to be very grippy. Yeah. So, yeah. So we've got obviously the three pieces of, of wood there. We've got on the hamster, on the pistol grip and the cheek piece. We've also at then that end, we've got the fully adjustable buttstock. Um, now this is really fully adjustable, isn't it? Yeah. I was playing with this a bit earlier. Now that, the actual hook moves up and down, doesn't it, on that, uh, on that rail. And this little knob here will adjust not only in and out, but it will adjust the cant of that butt hook as well, which is really, really rather That is rather very clever, clever actually, yeah. Yeah, have you seen that? Uh, yeah, I saw you adjusting it. Yeah. But obviously we can show and that that's to a, that's a twist, like that as well. It's a very simple and clever little, little way of doing it as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, and then to move the butt hook up and down, just slacken that Allen key off there, um, up or down. And you've also got a adjustable cheek piece on the side here, again with a with a tiny little knob on it. Um, that's on the cheek piece. That is not. That's fine. Um, so we've got the adjustable cheek piece there. Um, sorry, what el what else have we got? So we've got a little Picatinny rail underneath oh, yeah. the uh, un underneath there. Now cleverly, usually with a Day State Red Wolf, the battery is housed in the the pistol grip of the stock, isn't it? Yes. Now, when I went to sort this yesterday, <laughs> could I find it? And then I realised there was a uh, screw cap on the back here. So I thought, let's whip that out. Lo and behold, behold. there's a battery in there. The, the, the thing is, you tried to test me with it. You, uh, you said, did. oh, just take the battery out for me. Yeah. Um, little did you know, I already knew where it was. So yeah. I went straight to it. So that made you look a bit silly, didn't it? Well, it wouldn't <laughs> be the first time, would it? <laughs> no. So... We've got this hamster up the front. What, what's the hamster for, Lawrence? So the hamster will give you a little bit of extra uh, height on the front end. So rather than holding holding the rifle at the cylinder or, or on the stock itself, you can hold that there and that should give you a little bit more um, stability, especially when you're standing. You can rest it into your hip then and it's a little bit taller. Now, I will say it's a bit of a shame that it's not adjustable up and down. Um, but it, it, you can unlock it and move it front to back. Now, I wonder <clears throat> if Gavin will be making different size um, spacers for these with different different length bolts. Yep. Because that's all, all that's really going to change the, the height of that hamster, those spacers. Yep. That would be a, would be a handy little thing. It would, yeah. I mean, this one from, from our testing was absolutely bang on. So maybe he's, he's there. The, the powers that be are, are more intelligent than than us. Um, Gavin's uh, Gavin at PRS has, has clearly knows his stuff. We've also got on here, which is currently hidden by the tripod that we've got it on. We've got a little weaver rail up front here, so that is for your any accessories, your bipod and that sort of thing. Um, behind that, hidden underneath the hamster rail, is uh, an arca rail. So if you've got any arca accessories, that will clamp onto there. Now you were playing with this earlier, weren't you? And you took the hamster off. You wanted a bit less height for the for the bag that you're shooting on. And you took it off. Did did you find that useful for you? Yeah, we we then went back to having the hamster on, um, and we just dropped the bag down. Um, yes, I don't think it necessarily helped to take it off. No. So yeah, it's clearly a clearly a very handy little thing. Yeah, definitely. Short throw lever. This one as well. This this, this has on it. Yeah. The um. With the, the the standard Red Wolf comes with a with a bit longer throw lever. That's a that's such a cute little lever, isn't it? That is so. Yeah, that that's PRS's normal upgrade. Mm. Obviously, like you get with a with a standard rifle, you'd want that that little upgrade. It makes it a lot nicer. You can you can flick it with one finger while you got it up into the shoulder. You can flick it with one finger mm. rather than taking your hand off, cocking it back and forth. And if you've got a magazine, yes, yeah. I mean, we, we've been using it on both today. Both magazine and single, single shot. shot tray. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Fantastic. Um, and the last little difference um, between this and the standard Red Wolf is you've got a weaver rail on top here, a uh, standard pi or Picatinny uh, weaver, instead of the standard 9 to 11 mil dovetail like you'd get with a normal wolf. Now, I think that is sat onto that rail. So I think if you wanted to take that off, I think you could. Yes. So, but we we went with the we worked with it, didn't we? We went with the um, the weaver mounts for the scope. 
the thing is, what you will tend to find is obviously what we find in the shop is we, we set a few, quite a few of these up, obviously when we sell them, a very popular rifle. You would need extra high mounts on the 9 to 11 mil rail to get over the magazine if you put it in. So the magazine sits quite tall. I noticed that yesterday when I put the scope on. Whereas obviously this with the mm. extended that top weaver rail, yeah. you just have normal normal high weaver mounts. Yeah, that, uh, that made quite a difference because I, I actually sat the magazine in there when I was putting the scope on because I've, I've, we've been caught by that before, haven't we? Yeah. I certainly have, for sure. Now, while we're talking of scopes, I selected a scope out of the county yesterday to, um, to pop onto this rifle. I went for the King Cobra 6 to 24 by 50, I think that is, isn't it? Yeah. Now, I brought this down the range yesterday to set up, and Graham had a, had a go with it. And I think he's going to swap over to a King Cobra 6 to 24 by 50, to be honest. He absolutely loved it. It's a very fine reticle. Historically, they've been very, very, very fine, too fine, perhaps. Um, but these new models, the King Cobras and the Copperheads, they're just that little bit thicker um, and they're brilliant. I think what's important with these is to make sure that you adjust the the ocular to your eye yeah. correctly, isn't it? To yeah. make sure that you get that, um, you do get that focused in for your, for your eye. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, but perfect partner for this rifle, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Electronics on the uh, on the day state, Lawrence. Yep. I mean they, they've been out. We've, we've got a we've got a counter on there, haven't we? This came to us. I think this came to us with about four hundred and sixty shots from the factory, which shows that it just shows the lengths that day state go to when they're setting up the rifles, doesn't it? For yeah. Before the, before they go out, all the testing that they do. Yeah. Before absolutely. even we see them. Yeah. And I think well, I think we've put another three hundred shots onto that, no problem today. Which you know, uh, testing and zeroing and yeah, and having a bit of play. play. Yeah, it's to be honest, I've really enjoyed this today. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's been one of those that you you get to the last shot on the magazine. And you go, Shall I put it down? No, I'm going for another magazine full. And I mean, we were testing today with. QIS heavies, weren't we? Yep. And it loved them. We've had a few through. We've had QIS heavies, Day State Sovereigns, and through this one, I think that's everything. We've had a couple guns today. Yeah. And um, we've had a few different pellets through each of them. Yeah. And as we know, it's all in the pellet, isn't it? It yeah. can be, um, the pellet can make or break the accuracy of the rifle. The, this, this one loved it. Sovereigns were good. But I think the QIS just had the edge on them in this particular one, anyway. Okay, so in terms of weight and length and those sort of dimensions, um, it's quite a heavy rifle. It's about four point nine kilos. Um, it's over ten pounds. Yeah, it's a it is a it is a heavy. I tell you what, you notice it when you pick the the hard case up and you start carrying it. You're like. <laughs> I think it's lighter than other uh, other target yeah. target rifles. Do you? I don't know how much lighter, but it certainly certainly feels lighter. It's much more skeletal. Yeah, yeah. Now you've you've had a play with different. You've had a play with the air arms, haven't you? Yes, the new I XTI. I know when it turned up, I was out on deliveries. I was working, um, so I haven't had a play with. It. I haven't even handled one yet. So no, no. But. Yeah, Ske skeletal. You said skeletal, skeletal. Yep. yep. In terms of length, um, allegedly it's about a meter. Um, allegedly, I've got on my little note here, thirty-nine inches total, but that is obviously adjustable with that butt plate there. Um, Seventeen-inch barrel on this one. Mm -hmm. Now they do do the high-power versions in this, don't they? Which you can have with a seventeen-inch barrel, or you can have a twenty-three-inch barrel. Which develops quite a bit more power. One seven seven. I would, I would guess in this country, um, we're going to be wanting standard powers. Obviously, this is the sort of target rifle. It's a bit more expensive for that reason, and we don't really have a 
target shooting discipline like like the Yanks. Not a do. long, not a long range one. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean we're. I mean, some people do shoot out to 100 yards, 100 metres, don't they? But uh, I think in the States, they, they, they've, they've got they, the extra power, yeah. they've got the bigger calibres, and they, they really punch them out. But, yeah. So, how did you get on with the, with the hand grip? That's a fairly chunky hand grip, isn't it? How did you find it? It is. I like to shoot thumb up rather than sort of thumb hole round. Um, and I, I have to say, probably it it was it's clearly designed to to allow that shooting style, um, but it wasn't for me the most comfortable for my sized hands. It was it was quite nice as the pistol grip. I thought that was quite nice, and obviously the fully adjustable cheek piece and the hamster and everything. And like you said, we played about with the butt plate. We could get that comfortable for ours mm. for, for for us. And we had to. It it was it was. I I, I think the. The adjusting the cheek piece and the butt hook really did change the accuracy for us a little bit. It tightened that, that group up quite a bit. It was noticeable. Yeah. It really was. So it just shows that it you know, it, 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 it does pay to, to tinker and to, to set it up for yourself, for sure. <clears throat> now, you've talked about length. We've talked about weight. And it is a weighty one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, magazines. In the 177, we've got 13 shot, haven't we? Yep. We've got in 22, 11 shot. Yep. And in 25, 10 shot. He knows. I know that because I have the Delta Wolf at home personally. So it's the same mag. Yeah. Similar mag. Yeah. Not quite the same. Yeah. 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 Um, you shot it a lot more. You shot it more than I did. Um, you were the one that, that zeroed it to start with. So what do you? How do you? What do you think of the balance and the weighting of, of the that? The balance didn't really come into it for me because I was rested. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to, you know, hamster from the on on the four forearm. I was rested. Shot beautifully in the. Um, just had one front rest. Basically similar to how we're going to be shooting it in a sec. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's that is what they're what, certainly what they're designed for. It'd certainly be ideal for bench rest shooting. Mm. Um, but yes, the, what I was trying to get you to say is the the balance very well. Okay, like the like the standard rifle. You could have given me a bit of a. I could have done a, a little wink, little yeah. wink, wink. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like the standard rifle, the normal laminates and stuff. They're very very well balanced. I mean, it's not a cheap rifle, so you'd you'd kind of expect. No, it's it to not. Be. It's not a cheap rifle. You kind of expect it to be. But yes, it's brilliantly balanced um, and feels very nice in the shoulder. Obviously, we're fully adjustable and everything. Um, and it's it feels very, very nice, whether you're bench rest shooting or whether you, you're stood up. Now, smoothness. I think because the side lever and the trigger are purely just switches, aren't they? Yeah, that they're not mechanically linked to, to the hammer or anything else. They are purely switches. They are absolutely superbly smooth. I don't think you can get a rifle that's more smooth than one of the electronic run electronic guns. No, it's no. The the trigger is everything that a mechanical trigger tries to be. The action is as smooth as a mechanical action tries to be. So I don't think in terms of that we can ever give it any anything less than a perfect score. No, for instance, no, not, not at all. And the trigger is actually adjustable, slightly adjustable for weight as well. Personally, I've never adjusted one for weight. I've never needed to. I have. I've lightened one. Have you? Mm. Yeah. Everyone in the shop always always tries them for the first time. They think, oh, let me out. It's gone Go. off that quick already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I've yeah I've I've lightened mine at home. But. Okay. Yeah. What else do we get with it? I mean, the, there's the, the the chassis is specifically for the GP, isn't it? I know that PRS they do do a an aluminium chassis, don't they? Yes. In different colours as well. So if you wanted a skeletal, was that how you said it? Yeah. Skeletal chassis. PRS do do one in the different colours. Around about a thousand pound, I think, aren't they? 
Yes, I don't know about their availability or anything like that. No, no, but they. I, I think I think Gavin does make them. Um, so, you know, the, the, this one comes with it all complete as a package. Um, but you can, if you've already got the Red Wolf, you can have a um, aluminium chassis. That that is possible. It does also come in a hard case as well. One of the top quality Negrini hard cases that are full of Italian made quality bits of kit. Comes in that and obviously it will fit with the scope on, fits with just. the box plate. Yeah, just. Did you notice that? Now with this pistol grip, it's quite deep. For me, uh, the, the, there wasn't much clearance in the case. It fitted and it didn't touch at any point, but it it's, it's getting tight. So maybe if we'd had a big side, if we'd had like an eight inch side wheel on, like you could have for a, like an FT rifle. Yeah. You may have struggled to fit it. Maybe you just take the hamster off and then you just twist it. That, that, might that work. would have worked. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just an observation and, uh, you know, just worth pointing out. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So. I think that's everything for handling. Let's have a go at shooting it. Let's see what. Oh, let's, let, let's not see what the rifle can, let's see what I can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here we are, giving the Red Wolf GP a shot, literally. Um, <laughs> the, the pressure's on for you. Let's I'm feeling it. My, today my shooting has been... Up and down. It certainly has. More down than up, <laughs> to be honest. So, I've got the benefit of the electronic trigger on the day state, which is absolutely a joy to, to shoot. Yeah, very, very sharp, very crisp. Yeah. That's good. Let's see. So let's wake the wake the rifle up, wake the electronics up, because it yeah. does go to sleep. Pop the magazine in there. The magnet just locks it into place. Hmm, not much pressure. Oh, very nice. I think that's it. I think that's uh, yeah. that's all we're going to do for today. Yeah, cool. Um, through I'm quite the same hole, that. Uh, through so, the centre. See you all next time. Thank you very much. Do you think we'll get away with that? Uh, yeah, I reckon we'll probably have to do some more. Okay. If you just fire off into into nowhere. Okay. And then they'll just then you'll just pretend they're all going through the same hole. Oh, we could do, couldn't yeah, we? Yeah, let's do that. that. If only, eh? <laughs> Right. The pressure is greater now. That was a good shot. That was a good shot. That's it. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. I'm going. <laughs> yeah, let's give it a third. Let's give it a stall. Yeah. We need a few. It's normally the third or the fourth that goes astray, isn't it? Yeah. Which, especially when you're... You think you're doing well. Yeah, you do. The beauty of these rifles is they've got the electronic trigger, as we've, as we've said. Makes them very, very light. What you'd find is if it had a heavy trigger, you'd find, oh, well, it's, it's weird. I'm, I'm thinking I'm accurate, but it's, it's pulling shots all the time. As soon as you light the trigger up, they go through the same hole. Like that. That'll do for me, to be honest. Very clear that the rifle is very, very capable. If we, extremely capable. If we carried on, it would only be, like you say, you cracking under the pressure and the human... Absolutely human would, yeah. yeah. Missing out. Yeah. Now, we've tested some rifles in a time, haven't we? Yeah. And, I don't know, I always, I always consider the Red Wolf probably over the Alpha Wolf and the Delta Wolf. I suppose it's more because we sit at a bench and do this, and the weighting of the Red Wolf, the traditional rifle style, is probably almost always going to be better better weighted on the range. I like the length. Mm. I, I find with a with a short run, I know we've been playing with some shorter rifles earlier on and, and yesterday, and to be honest, I was struggling a bit with accuracy with the... Uh, yeah. I, I do like a longer rifle. Cool. Yeah. Shall we go into closing thoughts? Late, yes.
Yeah, after those three shots, I think okay. we ought. Okay. <laughs> so, so what what do we think on it? It's it's a one of their their brilliant Red Wolf rifles. It's one of their it's their special special new stock, their special target rifle. It is quite expensive though, isn't it? It's not it? cheap. No, no. Let's make no bones. It's not cheap, but it is superb. Yes, it very, is very very nice. very good. It's 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 targeted at a market, isn't it? And you know that, that those people that that would like one of these, they know they want it. They they yeah. know they want it. If yeah. you you're looking at this and going, oh, that's a that's a lot of money. Um, that's a. I, I, why would you want that adjustability? Why would you want that over the standard one? Some people do. It's probably yeah. yeah it's probably for the for the people that are looking for that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Horses for courses and all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I mean, it's a Red Wolf, basically. We love them. We're, we're, we're a big fan of Day State, anyway, aren't we? Yeah. Um, big shot count, reliable, massive shot easy count. Easy to use. Yeah, I think we're four hundred on this, aren't we? Yep, massive. We've not filled it today, and we've had those three hundred odd shots. We've yeah. not filled it today. No, we haven't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what more there is to be said for it. There, there's, there's nothing not to like, is it? Apart from the price tag. Yes, probably. Yeah, not. yeah. That, that's a little bit. Yeah, but it, it's a thing of beauty, and it works. Yeah. <laughs> and it works. You probably shouldn't <laughs> say that one on a four-figure rifle. But yes, no, it, it works perfectly. Brilliantly accurate. Um, easy to shoot. What more can we say? Yeah, definitely. It's a it's a competition winner. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be interesting, competition. This and the XTI, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe... Uh, maybe another video. Maybe another video, yeah. 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 Get them both on the range and... We could have a shoot-off. We could. Now, there's a thought. Oh, I don't know about me versus you. I, we could get a couple of good shooters to do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. Shall we wrap this one up? Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.